Let's take a look at some basic features within ParView. Three that are grouping together in this lesson are filters, slicers, and highlighting. These are some very basic features that deal with filtering and looking at data. I'm going to begin by launching a new ParView report by clicking on one of my data sources. And as that comes up, I'll first give this a title. This is going to be called uh, Flight Delay Breakdown. And I'm going to break this down by a, a couple of different ways, primarily around carriers. So I'm going to drag the carrier name out here. I'm really most interested in the major carriers, so I'll click on the home ribbon, turn on the filters area for a moment, and I'll drag the major carriers attribute out there. Click yes. I'll hide the filter so I have a little more room here to work. And then as I look at my flight table, I have some metrics I can use to just sum up the number of minutes of delay that I've had in different categories. So here I have ATC delays, carrier delays, late aircraft delays, security delays, weather delays, so many different kinds of delays. Now as I've dragged these in, it's actually listing them out per flight. That's a lot of data. What I really want is a sum, and I can do that by selecting each of these fields and changing them to a sum function. Now it might be better to just put that sum into the data model itself, but this works just as well for our purposes. That gives me a table. I don't really want a table. I want to look at this graphically. So I'm going to change that by going to the Design tab and choosing Column Chart. And that will give me the sum of minutes of delay. And I can see some of these carriers have more minutes than others. I'm going to widen that out just a little bit so I can see it better. And then to show you highlighting, I need to put one more chart on here. So I'm going to put one chart below it. Again, I'll drag out the carrier name. And then in this case, I have a field called delay total. This adds up all of those other fields. Let me move this over here so I can see it better. And again, it's listing out the every single flight. I don't want that. Let me sum that field. I do want a column chart, but this time I want to have the date along the bottom. So I'm going to take the carrier name, move that to series so I get a stacked bar. Go to the date, grab the month string, put that on the axis, and that should give me a view over time of what kind of delays that I've had here. And let me just size these up a little bit. The highlighting feature builds linkages between the charts that I put onto the surface here. So if I wanted to see US Air highlighted down below in the stacked chart, I could actually just click on the US Air bar there and I could see those bright green ones are US Air. And then if I want to turn off the highlighting at any time, I just click again on that bar. So highlighting on for Delta, highlighting off. So I want to point out next filtering because if I notice there's quite a lot of data on here a lot of bars in the month columns and a lot of items in the stacked bars I might want to break that down a little bit so I'm going to add two filters one will be a view filter that will impact everything on the chart the other will be a filter just within the chart so first I'll put a view filter on to limit this chart just to one of the years but we'll walk through it a little more slowly and just choose the year number, drag that into the filters column. Now that will always sort these filters by the attribute name. So U comes before Y. So that's something to keep in mind when you're developing the model is you will get this sorting going on. But to filter that number, if it's a number, I'll get a slider. To filter that number to 2011, I just need to drag this until I get there to 2011. And that's using a very basic filter. You can see that it has now filtered both of these charts. So they're a lot easier to read now than they were before. And while I'm looking at the filter, let me show you advanced filtering. So if I had not dragged that slider, I could accomplish the same thing in advanced filter mode by using conditions. So if I wanted to just select 2011, I could say show items for the value is 2011 and apply filter. 
and you might find that easier to do. The user can choose whether they want to use the advanced mode or the standard mode. If you'd like to clear the filter, click that eraser. And then the final navigation you see here is to delete the filter completely. So that will remove that filter from the view completely. But let me put it back. And then I will use this searching, which is very nice, to choose just 2011. So I get a little bit less there. The other thing I'd like to do is have fewer items in these stacks. So perhaps for the bottom chart, I just want to limit this to a few of the major, major airlines, some of the bigger ones. For every chart or object in the view, I have a filter icon. If I click on that icon, you'll notice that in the filters area where it used to say only view, now it says chart. So I can go back and forth. Again, these are the filters that apply to the entire view. These are the filters that apply to the chart. So perhaps I'd like to limit just this one chart, not everything, but just this one chart to a few airlines that I can choose myself. I'll choose those four. And now I will hide the filters area so you can see better. The highlighting still works. So if I, if I choose United, I can see just the United picture. Delta looks like that. American looks like that. The last thing I'm going to show you this time is slicers. So slicers are a lot like filters. In fact, serve the same purpose as view filters. But they work a little bit differently. Rather than being hidden, a slicer will actually be on the surface. So to add a slicer to my view, I'm just going to drag the origin ATC region. And this is the same thing I would do if I was about to build another chart with this ATC region. But instead of adding metrics to this object, I'll just come up here and click the slicer button. That will convert that into basically a filter that does appear with the view and filters this view just like a view filter would but I don't need to go to the filters area to access it it just stays on the surface that could be good or bad depending on your needs but now I can use this just the same so if I want to look at these two views filtered by flights that originated in the east it would look like that in the southwest more like that Great Lakes and so on. So that's how we use our filters. Again, we have view filters, we have individual chart filters, slicers. A slicer is essentially the same as a view filter but appears on the view itself. And then highlighting lets us look at just a slice of a related chart. In all of this you'll notice I didn't really do any setup or connecting. All of these connections are maintained automatically by the BI semantic model kind of under the covers. So it's the relationships in the underlying BISM that enabled these functions.